Hello and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending July 11th, 2020. An official website opened this week for an upcoming television anime adaptation of Hajime Musashino's Burning Kabaddi manga. The story centers on first year high school student Tatsuya Yogoshi, who used to be a star soccer player, but now dislikes sports in general. All right, high school student, check. Kid superstar at their sport, check. Angsty backstory, seems pretty likely. What's next? That's right, joining the high school sports team. Tatsuya gets recruited by the school's Kabaddi team and is skeptical at first, but becomes more interested once he actually watches one of their practices. Now, Kabaddi isn't exactly a household name in most places, so don't feel bad if you ever heard of it. It's a contact sport played by two teams of seven, where a single offensive player must invade the opposing team's territory and try to tag out as many of their members as possible, while avoiding being tackled all within a single breath. That premise alone will definitely lend itself to some excellent sports anime slow-mo scenes. The sport is popular in South Asia, where it's the national sport of Bangladesh, as well as the state game of 11 different Indian states. The Burning Kabaddi manga uh, debuted in 2015 and shipped its 14th compiled book volume just yesterday. Next up, something a little more saucy. Publisher Alpha Polis has an imprint specifically for um, novels and manga oriented towards adult women and has announced this week that 12 of these stories are inspiring anime adaptations. Each story will comprise a single anime episode, with the whole collection streaming this fall under the collective title, brace yourselves for this one, Eternity Late Night Wet Love Channel. Yes, I just said that. The episodes will air weekly, with the regular version airing late night on Tokyo MX, and the deluxe heart version, complete with adult scenes, streaming online. This week also brings uh, announcements of two new short anime. First up, the short anime, whoop, there we go. First up, the short anime series Nocturne Boogie, which was produced entirely remotely during the quarantine. Creator Junpei Morita created the product project while experimenting with new ways of production now that COVID-19 has limited the use of traditional facilities. As well as creating the anime's premise, Morita also wrote and directed the episodes himself. The series tells the story of a group of roommates who are monsters and one secret monster hunter, but are each trying to live normally while keeping their true nature a secret from others. The series premiered on YouTube and Gyao on July 10th. The anime also used an interesting technique to raise some extra money while it was in production. Add space for sale within the anime itself. Posters and TV screens in the background of the show could be reserved by sponsors, and their own photo or video would be shown during the episode. Hey, maybe next time we can have our newscast on in the background of an anime episode. Ah, there we go. One more anime short is on its way as of this week. X-Flag, or S-Flag, I'm not sure, announced on Wednesday It'll be airing a new collaborative anime short on July 15th. The short, titled Spice, is the first part of a collaborative project between X-Flag and other Japanese creators and musicians. Spice is inspired by the four-member girl, uh, girl band Scandal, whose original song, Spice, will be featured in the short. The project's official website gave the following description of the new short. Quote, we knew that when you mix a diverse set of people and talents, the extraordinary happens. So, with a mission to create new culture, we brought artists and creators together to combine a unique story, masterful animation, and an all-new song from Scandal into something the world's never seen before. The result? Our very first work, Spice, a tale of heroes fighting to protect their city and how they grow along the way. It's got a dash of courage, a pinch of teamwork, and a whole lot of heart. End quote. 
Aww. The episode will be produced by CG studio Marza Animation Planet with spooky graphic credited for the artwork. The project also makes use of the gaming engine Unity, which is proving itself to be quite useful for things uh, beyond games as well. So curious to see where that ends up. Our next little news tip isn't all that surprising, but that doesn't make it any less exciting. G Kids announced this week that they have officially licensed Studio Ghibli and Goro Miyazaki's upcoming Earwig and the Witch film. The company plans to release the film in North American theaters in early 2021, so those of us in North America definitely have something to look forward to for next year. And hopefully it'll be touring theaters in other parts of the world as well. But, you know, gotta wait for news on that. The 82-minute feature film, based on the novel of the same name, will make its television premiere this winter on the NHK General Channel, and was also chosen as part of this year's official selection for the Cannes Film Festival. Pretty darned impressive, gotta admit. <clears throat> and now, on to our regularly scheduled online event announcements of the week. Our own dear Anime News Network is the latest to get in on the online streaming events trend. They announced this week that they have partnered with Anime New York City, quote, to create an ongoing series of online events that will showcase anime premieres, in-depth interviews, and interactions with anime creators and publishers. Anime News Network Connect will launch its first episode on July 14th, uh, the episode will feature a special online premiere of the new anime Ghibli 8 and afterwards an exclusive interview and Q&A session with the show's producer, Ryo Aoki, and director Masahiko Komino. They will also be giving away five autographs from character designer Yoshitaka Amano, who is best known for the Final Fantasy series and Vampire Hunter D. The episode is only available to audiences in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, though I'm sure determined fans in other places can find some way of watching. ANN also makes it clear that this episode of the show will only be available live and will not be archived, which makes sense as they're streaming an episode of an anime licensed elsewhere. They note that future sessions of Connect will feature, quote, both live and pre-recorded events, including screenings, interviews, and company focus sessions, as well as other topics, end quote, and that they hope to make many future Connect episodes available permanently in their archive, though, quote, some will undoubtedly be live only, end quote. So if this sounds like something you'd like to tune into, check out the first Anime News Network Connect episode at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on July 14th. <clears throat> Interesting to see a, a, an ongoing online series of events. Another con has announced their switch to online this week as well. There is certainly one slight silver lining to all this. We have the opportunity to attend a whole lot more cons than we normally would in person. Montreal's Otakuthon convention announced that it will be holding this year's event virtually on August 15th and 16th. Non-live content from, from the convention will also be available for 30 days after the event in case you can't make it or if you just want to relive the experience. The event will include a continuous stream of main events, two continuous streams of panels, and a virtual exhibition hall with dealers, industry, and artists. It will also feature a social lounge where attendees can chat, call, and video chat, as well as interactive video gaming streams, game shows, and guests. Convention t-shirts will be available for sale at the Virtual Otakuthon merchandise booth, and tickets, which will cost $15 US, will include a physical badge and a postcard, so you can still come away from the event with some con souvenirs. Who doesn't want that? A new English manga app is now available for those of you looking for even more legal ways to read. The free manga app Kamiko launched an English version this week in the United States, Canada, and Singapore. The new iOS and Android app is called Pocket Comics and launched with 41 titles containing both Japanese manga and Korean manhwa. 
The service also plans to launch Spanish language support at some point in the future. Some of the titles that launched with the app include Yayoiso's Real Life, Kakero Utsugi's How to Keep a Mummy, Kurose's Momokuri, and Sho Futamata's Nanbaka. All four of these series previously inspired their own anime adaptations, so there might even be some titles you've seen before among the offerings. Exciting, plus the other you know, 37. The service works on a rental system, which they specify is, quote, an equitable system for artists and writers. Uh, users can try out the first part of any story for free. Once they finish the free chapters, they can either choose to purchase uh, chapters directly or can wait a certain amount of time to be able to rent the next chapter, usually about 23 hours. The service plans to add new webcomics to their selection every month, so manga fans, give this one a look. <clears throat> if you've ever wished you could get inside the mind of some of the great early manga creators, or at least in their personal workspace, your chance might have just arrived in Tokyo. A museum opened in Tokyo's Toshima Ward on Tuesday that reconstructs the Tokiwaso, an apartment building that was famous for housing some of Japan's most renowned classic manga artists, including Astro Boy creator and father of manga Osamu Tezuka, Fujio Akatsuka of Tenzai Bakabon, Fuji Fujiko Efugio, creator of Doraemon, and Chotaro Ishinomori of Kamen Rider. The new Tokiwaso Manga Museum replicates the rooms of the manga artists and is located uh, only about 200 meters from the place where the original building once stood. So that's pretty cool, pretty, pretty close to the original. At the opening ceremony, Toshima Ward Chief Yukio Takano said, we want to showcase the birthplace of anime and manga culture to the entire world. The museum's first visitor noted that, uh, well, <laughs> Uh, even the mold and spots on the interior walls have been recreated perfectly. They said they could feel firsthand the manga creator's lifestyle and breath. Despite the flawless attention to detail in the reproduction, the museum charges no entry fee, though reservations to visit must be made in advance through their website. Pretty interesting stuff. Now, are you or anyone you know planning to propose to your loved one anytime soon? Just want a special gift, maybe, for a special someone? Well, the latest addition to the never-ending Evangelion merchandise line has got you covered, because nothing says I love you like the Spear of Longinus. That's right, uh, You Treasure is releasing a set of Evangelion-themed wedding and engagement bands themed after the mythical weapon, the Spear of Longinus. Um, the Spear of Longinus Solitaire Ring and the Spear of Longinus Pear Ring are both available. Each comes in two versions, a Platinum and Rose Gold version and the more casual Silver and Cubic Zirconia version. The Solitaire Ring, the one with the diamond, costs 330,000 yen or uh, around 3,000 US dollars in the Platinum version, which is pretty typical for a wedding ring, though not typical for licensed anime good, unless you're one of the three people buying that $40,000 REM figure. The Pear Ring, which features less diamond but more obvious Spear of Longinus, is about half that price in its platinum version. Or, if that level of commitment isn't up your alley just yet, the silver versions each cost around $150. Those silver rings will be only available for pre-order through the 28th of this month, though. So if you're going to pick one of these up as a gift for somebody else, or just a cool accessory for yourself, Make sure to do it soon. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.